Before we explain what Docker does, it helps to motivate Docker by showing an example in relationship to Raza. So what I have here is the Hello World Raza project that you get when you run Raza init. And I already trained a model for this project. So that means that I should now be able to run a server that can make predictions based on this conversational data. So I can say Raza run enable API. And when I run this, we're starting up a server that is hosting this model. It takes a few seconds, but we see that the Raza server is now up and running and that we can make requests on localhost 5005. Now I checked the documentation beforehand. So I know that if you go to a Raza server, which again, in this case is running on localhost 5005, but you can go to the model parse path and here you should be able to pass in some text and you'll get some NLU predictions. If I now hit send, we see that we get a response that comes back. If I were now to change the text into something like hello, we should see that there are some changes happening over here. And indeed a new intent is picked up. So that's good. But in general, we now have this service that is running on my local machine that has the Raza model running. And although that's a good thing, this is also a bit of an issue. It's great that I'm running this on my machine, but I would like other people to use it. What I would really like to do is just take my Raza model and all of its dependencies and just bundle that up. And then the idea would be to take this bundled service and to then maybe host that on a server or a cloud provider. And although there are many ways that you could go about this bundling, a preferable method is to use this technology called Docker. Docker can take all of your code and dependencies, save it into a representation that then any cloud provider will be able to pick up. And that's great because that means that we have a reproducible method of deployment. It doesn't matter what cloud provider you pick, as long as you have a cloud provider that can interact with Docker, you're able to host Raza. So let's start from scratch and get Raza going inside of Docker. What I've now done is I've added a Docker file as well as a Docker ignore file. Let's discuss what these files do. The Docker file is open here and this Docker file tells Docker how to make a bundled service, so to say. And the way that you should read this is that we're basically saying, well, let's start from a template. We'll start by importing the basic Python 3.7 Docker image. And from that starting point, we're going to be adding layers. First, we're going to install Raza. And after that, we're going to set a new working directory. After that, we're going to copy some files this command basically takes all the files that we have at our disposal here and just moves them inside of the container. And the whole idea is that every single command inside of a Docker file adds something to the state that we had before, such that in the end, we'll have a bundled service that has everything that we need. Let's zoom into this copy command though, because we want to prevent one thing. If you look at all the files that we have here, we have our models directory that could contain many different models. We have a very big virtual environment file over here as well. And we probably don't want to add those to our Docker container. That would be unnecessary data that's moving in. The first thing that we probably want to do is we just want to make sure that we don't include any of these files that we won't need. And that's what this Docker ignore file is for. It might remind you of a git ignore file. This file basically tells Docker which files not to copy in when we are running this command. And here's what the Docker ignore looks like. I'm ignoring markdown files. I'm ignoring all of my tests. I'm ignoring all of my models as well as my virtual environment. I am also ignoring all of my custom actions because typically custom actions are run in a separate service. But the main point I want to show here is that we're ignoring a couple of files. Once these files are copied in, we will have all the files that we need to train a new model. This data folder is still copied in. So what I could do as part of my preparing the Docker bundle 
is I can train a new Rasa model. Now, this is going to be time consuming. All of these commands that we are running, they will take time to run. So we shouldn't take it lightly that we're doing this. But for illustration purposes, I think it's nice to show that this will work, mainly to demonstrate that we really can make this service that doesn't depend on any of the models that we trained beforehand. Once the model is trained, we set the user to be something else than the root user. This is for security reasons. And then we set the entry point as well as the standard command for the container. So let's discuss the difference between those two. Let's say that I have my Docker service with my Rasa model built in. Now, there's a couple of things you might want to use this container for, but considering the focus on Rasa, odds are that Rasa, the command line, is going to be the entry point, so to say, for this container. Maybe from the outside you want to call the Rasa shell or the interactive client. And by setting this entry point, we basically set a shortcut that allows us to still be able to run both of these commands easily. However, the main command that we will be running will be the Rasa run command with the enable API flag as well as this port setting. Given this theoretical background, let's just start running some Docker commands from the terminal so that we can see the effect of all of our settings. What I'm going to be doing first is I'm going to give Docker the build command. The idea is that we're going to build our bundle, so to say, but I'm also going to tag it with a name. This is my username on Docker Hub, and this will be the identifier of what I'm currently building, such that this together is the tag of what I'm building, that way I can refer to it later. And I'm now adding a dot here basically to indicate that I want to use the Docker file that's in my current directory, which is this one. So let's run this, but be aware this might take a moment. We are now done building and we can have a look at what happened. We can see the command that we started with over here. And very quickly, you can see the output from installing Raza. The output here is pretty much the same output you would get if you were installing Raza in your terminal. But in this case, we're installing it inside of our Docker container. When we scroll down a bit, we see that we set the working directory and that we're copying files in, which indeed is what we defined over here. But right after, we are running our Raza train command inside of the container. And again, you see pretty much the same output that you would get if you were just running this from the terminal. Eventually, this container is done building, and we see that it's been successfully tagged with the name that we gave it. Note that it's also telling us that this is the latest version of this tag. You could also attach version numbers if you'd like, but what I would not like to do is just show you that we can indeed run the container and all the code that's inside of it. So first, I'll just run the basic command for the container. That is to say, I won't be using the entry point, I'll just be directly using this command. To do that, I'm going to call docker run, and I would like to run it in interactive mode, which is what this IT stands for. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to forward the ports. The way that you should think about this is that you have your Docker container, and it's one thing to open up a port on that Docker container to run an application, but it's another thing to actually have that port be available on your local machine, such that a browser could communicate for it. And it's this connection that I'm declaring with this setting over here. Inside of my container, I am running on port 8080, and I'm telling Docker to forward that port to my local machine as well. If I don't do this, I won't be able to reach the code that's running inside of my container. The final thing I got to do is tell Docker which container to run, and I'll point it to this name, this tag that I gave it earlier. We now see that the Raza server is up and running, and this is pretty much like the beginning of the video, except now we are running all of our code inside of a Docker container. And if I were now to go back and actually try the request again, I will need to change the port number. But that's about it. And this is really neat because I now have my Raza model running inside of a container, which is very nice. 
So let's stop running this container now. I can achieve that by hitting Control C. Note that this Control C trick mainly works because I've set this interactive flag. But what I can do now is I can have a go at just using this entry point. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be making use of this entry point. The idea being, if I just run the command like so, we're gonna run this command defined here. But if I just add any command after, it's going to append to the entry point. So if I were to type shell here, that will be like running Raza and then shell. And again, it feels like I'm running the Raza shell on the terminal, but I'm actually running my code inside of my Docker container. So that means I could say hello. And because I only have an NLU model, I get my confidences, etc. I've been able to run this container locally, which is great, but a final thing that's worth showing is that you can also tell Docker to push what we've made just now. I can say, hey, take that container and push it to a registry so that other people can go ahead and use it. What I'm doing right now is I'm pushing my container to the Docker IO hosting service, and I could also push to a cloud provider's repository. That's also possible. But the main thing that I'm doing is I'm pushing my container with all of the code that's in there to a place so that other people can download it and use it. And there we go, it is done uploading. And what I can do now is I can go to my Docker Hub page. And when you go there, you'll notice that there's now this Raza demo that's hosted, which is something that people can now download. And this is something that's now publicly available. What I hope you recognize at this point is that Docker will definitely play a role when we're talking about deployment. It gives us a really neat way to bundle up all of our requirements and code into a single downloadable object that people can run themselves elsewhere or in the cloud. However, there are a few things that we might be able to make just a little bit easier here. Let's have a final look at this Docker file that we've made. There's nothing inherently wrong with the Docker file, but let's consider just a couple of things. Currently, I'm training just an NLU model when I'm building this container. And although there's nothing inherently wrong with it, there's something to be said that maybe we want to train not just a NLU model, but also a core model. And maybe we don't want to have this training happen every single time that we build this container. Maybe instead what we'd like to do is say, well, there's a pre-made Raza container and we have a model that's outside of the container and we would like to just get that model into the container as part of its build process. That way we can train a model once and build this container many times without having to do this expensive model training bit. And while we're at it, it might also be nice not to have to start from scratch with this Python container and instead to use a pre-made Raza container. And Raza definitely provides these containers for you, so you don't have to repeat many of these steps. And I'll explain how to use that in the next video of this series.